recently just got back from Maker Faire in California, and of all the cool things I saw, it had to be one of my friend's things. Adam Woodworth had these amazing LEGO submarines and also some other Star Wars creations that he turned into subs at the Google booth. Look at this! This is amazing! Now if you want to check out some of that stuff, I'll leave a link at the very end so you can check that out for yourself. But not to be outdone and let Adam have all the fun, I decide I should probably make my own LEGO subs with some specific twists in them. Now what's better than one LEGO submarine? Probably another LEGO submarine. You know what's better than that? Actually, just kidding. I only made two LEGO submarines. Anyways, let's put these in the water. Okay, before we get too far into these subs, let's talk about what actually goes inside them and what makes them actually tick and work in the water. We actually started making our subs back in LA, but it couldn't be the video as we ended up being a little bit too busy with our schedule. So some of the subs were simple as clicking a few bricks in our spare time, it is something that looked like a submarine. For maneuvering, we use traditional RC hardware such as servos, motors, electronic speed controllers, and whatnot. Some of the motors were interfaced into 3D printed parts that Sam actually designed. The interesting challenge with submarines, though, is command and control. Most modern RC aircraft and vehicles, such as drones and airplanes, use 2.4 GHz for control. However, they don't exactly work underwater. If you get yourself an iPhone, or any phone for that matter, and have a waterproof case, try to load a YouTube video and dunk it in the tank of water. There we go, now it's loading. What you'll quickly notice is that the signal will actually drop out in a, probably around three to four inches and no video. It actually turns out your phone operates on 2.4 gigahertz and sometimes 5.8. And when you put it in the water, it doesn't actually go very far, which is why we had to switch to lower frequencies such as 75 megahertz or even lower to get something that works underwater. Now you can think of it this way. The best analogy I could come up with was simply this. Imagine you have two dudes with different leg lengths. They both must travel the same distance because the frequencies all travel at the same speed. Now in air they both do so with relative ease, however change the air in this case to water and it's a different story. Also we'll be using peanut butter for illustration purposes. Now notice the long guy doesn't expend as much energy to get through the peanut butter at a given distance. The guy with short legs however expends a ton of energy flailing around to get through the peanut butter considering he has to do the same distance and the same speed as the long legged guy so he ultimately craps out and falls short. Interesting fact. This is why your microwave typically operates around the 2.4 GHz band, as the penetration is also about the right depth to heat food. That's enough nerd stuff right now, let's get back to this. Performance is vastly different between the two. The small submersible uses differentials in motor RPM to steer, and the larger sub has a rudder like traditional submarines. They also maneuver like real subs. The small submersible is highly maneuverable and fast, while the big sub, well, moves like a large nuclear-powered sub, slowly. 
As far as range and run times, the little sub has a video ring time of about 5 minutes and the larger sub can go for about an hour because it has a larger battery. Well the subs are great and all, but we couldn't just leave it at just that. So we started the LEGO Defense Initiative Missile Program. Okay, maybe we just wanted to see the sub shoot fireworks underwater. We first did a lot of testing underwater with various rockets. But ultimately, we settled on the largest rocket we could possibly stuff into the sub because bigger is obviously probably better. All right, we should probably put them in the sub now, right? Yeah, it feels safer being away from it. <laughs> They land on your roof. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, All right, you ready? Go. Three, two, one. Open door and fire rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a wrap. This works horrible. Uh, we'll explain that back in the shop. So that went sort of okay. There were ultimately problems with rocket stability, but that's a topic for a rocket video in the future. However, this is more of a learning experience for me to lead into possibly like a 3D printed submarine because I want to be able to refine all my ideas and have a real nice submarine to kind of share with you guys in the future. Also, this is just a real fun excuse to play with Legos and make them RC since it's something that I've always wanted to do as a kid. If you want to build your own Lego submarine, I highly recommend making a smaller one. Out of our experience, we found the bigger one kind of held more air, was harder to kind of balance in the water because Lego bricks were holding air and you know it would sink. So we had to kind of shake it around and do that. The smaller one, however, was much easier, had less parts, easier to maneuver, and it was honestly just a lot more fun to drive. Well, is that all we should do with the subs? Oh, someone's gonna ask if we throw fire. Yeah, okay, firecrackers. All right, Sammy, what are you doing? I'm hold it Huh? What are these? Someone's gonna ask if oh my can, gosh, tor, you know, depth charge the uh, submarine. So let's do that. I think that's a wrap. Okay, 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 hang on, I, I think I gotta read this. Well, that's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you wanna see more Lego videos, we did a Lego airplane you can check out somewhere in the cards. Also, be sure to check out Adam's builds. He does, he, like I said, he's an amazing engineer and he kind of inspired me to try my own Lego submarine. And that's a wrap. He broke my Legos. <laughs> <laughs>